Republican House Minority Leader Vincent Candelora joins me now to talk about where this legislation is. Mr. Candelora, welcome back to Face the Facts. Thank you for having me. So first up, this is going to be brought up in a special session. We're ironing out the date still at this point. Um, where do you think this stands now, and what are you hoping is going to happen soon? Yeah, we're, we're finally, finally in bipartisan talks now on that piece of legislation. Up until Sunday night when the bill was released, uh, many Democrats and all Republicans didn't see what was in that bill. Now that we took a look at it, um, there are some concerns that we have, and we think that there needs to be some changes in order to move that bill forward. So, so one of the one sticking of the points in earlier debates about it was who could be licensed, how they would be licensed, where is that, and what needs to be ironed out? Yeah, I think right, right now, that bill is structured in a way that really is going to decimate our medical industry. So the current growers probably will not have entry to the market. I'm concerned we're going to see that, that program go away, which is a great program for the state. And we're going to see these equity partners coming in, developing and cultivating marijuana. Um, um, and we're just concerned of it's really a, about people making money versus legalizing a product and making sure it's safe for the state of Connecticut. So you're saying, saying like, like equity, equity funds, funds can come in. in and finance a big operation like this and then big money's in control. Right. And all, all the, money the money sort of goes off budget. So it goes into an equity fund that's being distributed to private individuals for other community development. And there's just not enough to go toward public health support for drug addiction and other societal issues that come along with marijuana use. So, so we, know we know equity is a big part of the discussion. Both sides have been talking about it uh, to try to get black and brown entrepreneurs into the cannabis business. They were uh, disproportionately harmed during the drug war, the war on drugs, excuse me, in the 1980s. Where does that go from here? Yeah, I think, I think that, that there's going to be components of that still in the bill. Uh, but I think the other side of the equation we're not talking about is the um, public health harm. I mean, these communities uh, have been, been impacted by marijuana use from a public health perspective. We have homelessness. We have addiction. We have psychosis. So we want to make sure there's a balance of money addressing those issues. Moving, Moving forward. forward with that, uh, other health effects, people who are against uh, this passing at all say, uh, look, the human brain is not completely formed until we're 26. So if people are allowed to use recreational marijuana at 21, they're concerned about what the health effects could be to brain health and maybe other portions of their health as well. Um, how do you take the first step in trying to address that in the legislation? Yeah, I think we need to follow the science. We need to limit the THC levels that are used for rec. Interestingly, Colorado just passed a law that's creating a panel in the next six months. They are going to do that, bring down the THC levels. It was actually progressive Democrats in Col Colorado that pushed for those measures because they're realizing that uh, marijuana does have a bad impact on our youth, and we need to sort of get that genie back in the bottle. So that, that can, can actually, actually be done, be done through, through the way, way it's cultivated, cultivated I, guess? I guess? That's, that's right. right. I mean, I mean, we, we could, for, for marijuana medical program, leave those limits alone. Um, but for the recreational program where people are just unregulated and can use as much as they want, we need to just lower those THC levels so it's not impacting the brain. So one of the other interesting parts that came up in the very beginning of this debate and a little bit throughout um, is how do you address the law enforcement aspect? First of all, um, if you're behind the wheel and you're drunk, law enforcement have a breathalyzer test. They have a field sobriety test and eventually a blood test or a urine test. Um, how are the parameters going to be set for somebody who what's what determines who's high too high behind the wheel? Well, it's still going to be a sort of a judgment call for our police officers, so it's going to require training, and the bill needs to put money toward those efforts to train our officers so they will be able to d identify people who are driving under the influence. Do you, Do you believe, believe state, state police should be a part of, part of that, that conversation, conversation so we understand, you know, the like .08 is the national standard for driving under the influence as far as alcohol is concerned? Um, I, it's, it's not like they haven't busted people for pot before, so they have some idea of how this goes. It's just a state regulation and a, and a benchmark to hit needs to be established, right? That's right. And we're not there yet, so um, the legislation, as it's rolling out, I think we're going to need to address that issue. And, and your biggest concern moving forward? I think the biggest concern is making sure that, that these products aren't marketed to children. Uh, we shouldn't be putting gummy bears on the market with THC levels in it. The products that are being produced if they're attractive to children, they're going to take them no matter what. So I think we should be taking those products off the shelf for the recreational program. Leave it in the medical program, which is regulated. People get cards and they're able to use it. This will really change the face of Connecticut if we're going to see widespread use and widespread forms of the marijuana product in all of our uh, food products. Do you think, think there's any way we can look at legislation that was recently passed, either the vaping flavors, because we we're concerned that kids are getting addicted to that, or um, 
the uh, the cigarettes, the, the tobacco industry, the way that was regulated state by state and then federally as well. Is, can that be, uh, you know, a jumping off point or a benchmark? Absolutely. It's sort of, it's almost hypocritical that we're allowing, you know, the gummy bears and the sodas in, with THC, and at the same time we're, we're banning flavored vape because those products are being attractive for children. We should be reconciling those philosophies and putting out a bill that, that's, that regulates that. The Vermont model is great. It has a true homegrown component, which this bill does not even though the, the proponents claim it does. In July of 2023, the commissioner can make a report and pull back that homegrown model. So I think we should be looking toward Vermont and copy them, not looking toward Colorado. New York is a concern because of Governor Lamont's, hey, they're right next door, we could drive across the border. Massachusetts, the same thing. Can we glean anything from them or should we pretty much... In your opinion, I, I think it, you know we, we could, could take, take a look at what, what they've, they've done. done. I think their their bills go a little bit too far. Um, and the point about going over the border, you know, it's not here yet in Connecticut. We're already seeing the impact of of the widespread marijuana use throughout our state. Um, and it shouldn't be about the revenue, which is what we continually to hear from the governor and and the Democrats. This really needs to be crafted in a way that protects public health moving forward. A lot to keep, keep an eye on. House Minority Leader Vincent Kindalora, thanks so much for joining us on Face the Facts once again.